Okay folks, how we doing? You're watching Mr. Ted and today we're going to play Plague Inc. Evolved. It's the new port on the PC from the original Plague Inc. game on the handhelds, on the tablets. Let's go straight in with single player main game. And we need to select a plague type. I'm going to play it as though nothing's been unlocked. We can un uh, unlock Further plague types such as virus and fungus, you unlock those by uh, basically killing off the world with bacteria to unlock virus, with virus to unlock fungus and so on. So I'll start at the beginning. Obviously the idea of the game is we need to evolve our disease to turn it into a plague to kill off all human life in the world before the global researchers and governments find a cure and put an end to our mischief. So his genetic code modifications, I did unlock one before the terror site, I've cleared that. And then we go on to select the game difficulty type, normal, and our plague will be called Ginger Nipples. And before I go any further, I'm not sure if it's true or not, I'm not ginger, but if anyone ginger is watching this video and they do have ginger nipples, I apologise if you are offended, it's not meant in any malice whatsoever, and I do apologise, uh, it's just the first thing that came into my head, basically, don't ask why, it just did. <laughs> Okay, so welcome to Plague Inc. You are a new bacteria. To win, you must evolve and spread across the world, wiping out all humans in the ultimate plague. We need to select a country to begin with. Uh, obviously, this is the world. 6.8 billion people worldwide. And we need to find somewhere to start. Obviously, this map shows the shipping and airports. I just zoom in on Africa, on Egypt, for example. Two shipping ports and an airport. Obviously, that's going to help spread the disease to other countries across sea and across land. And I'm going to start in. Let's start in South Africa. We'll start there, and straight away we've got two people infected with ginger nipples. It says a weak and used to hot temperatures, it must evolve using DNA points to infect more people. So by clicking on these coloured bubbles, we get more DNA points, which is mentioned down in this bottom left corner. And we can spend those points, I'll just take you into the screen now. We can spend those points on evolving our ginger nipples disease. We have options for transmission traits, symptoms and abilities. And the way I'm going to play this first level is I'm going to use the transmission traits to begin with and get this thing spread worldwide. I want to get everyone in the world infected with, with ginger nipples, he says with a straight face. Um, once everyone in the world is infected and then I'm then going to go and try and kill them off using the symptoms and the abilities traits these are used to resist against the cold climates the hot climates and also to resist against the drug researchers when they start to get involved and this bacterial resilience that can be used as a bacterial shell to protect against all climates and as you can see along the bottom of the screen there, infectivity, severity and lethality bars. We want to get this infectivity one quite high to get the disease spread. The severity, I want to keep that one as low as possible because that's one that indicates whether it's going to get noticed by doctors. If that stays really low, then there's less chance the, the cure progress is going to start. And the lethality, obviously, that shows how lethal our disease is. Obviously, at the moment, it's not lethal at all, as there are no symptoms. Okay, so what I'm going to do for the majority of this video, rather than let you just sit and watch a screen of the world, 
is speed the game up to full speed. See the date in the top corner. It's pretty much today's date when we started, April. And yeah, that just says there when we get the random orange bubbles, click them and we get a couple of extra DNA disease points. We're starting to spread from South Africa, across South Africa, sorry. If we click in the ocean, see the statistics in the bottom tab there, the world, we've got 26 people infected. And if we click on that tab, it will take us to information on each and every country. This list down the left shows the countries which are healthy. The one in the middle shows the countries which are infected and the countries which have died of death. If you click, for example, on South Africa, there's a little bit of spiel about each country. Top line pretty much says all you need to know. Typically, as a hot, arid climate, that helps when you're picking which traits to use to transmit the disease across the world. I tend to struggle with spreading the disease across the colder climates those being such as Greenland where as well there's no land borders across Canada and Russia where it's a lot colder and um, so to combat that I will in fact I'll do it pretty, pretty soon I will go into the abilities and select the cold resistance not just yet we'll start with transmission and I'll select water because it says here increases infectivity especially in humid environments and ship transmission we'll evolve that for, that's going to cost us nine DNA points leaves us with 23 and this one air one this increases infectivity especially in arid environments and plane transmission so together the idea is it's going to help spread the disease either by plane or by ship Lizards with 13 and we have successfully evolved ginger nipples. We get more points by popping DNA and biohazard bubbles and infecting people. So the more people we infect the more disease points we, we get as well and that number should increase quite nicely. Uh, ginger nipples has infected hundreds in South Africa increasing the chance that an infected person will infect a healthy person. Keep evolving your disease. So now we just need to wait for the unlucky mode of transport to pass on the disease to a neighbouring country or quite possibly a totally different country somewhere in the world by plane. That would be nice. And now we've infected thousands. You can see along, along the bottom there that number's going up quite nicely. Exponential is the number. Is the word, sorry. Basically, as it gets going, there's no stopping it. It's just going to get faster and faster rate of infection. So this one, researchers have calculated it takes longer than expected for radioactive fluids with half litre for a reason unknown. A lot of these news bulletins are, I think, quite pointless, but others do give you some good indications into which moves to make as we infect. South America, Brazil, I think that is. But yeah, I think as the game progresses, I think those news bulletins will get a lot more important into what choices we make. So now we're starting to spread into different countries, into different continents. And as I said about the cold resistance, now that we've spread to Europe, and the UK particularly, I know that that is quite a cold country. I'm going to go into the abilities traits and select the cold resistance. I'm going to evolve that one. And that opens up level 2, which will cost another 13 DNA points. We'll do that as well. And also the bacterial resilience protects against all climates. With a bit of luck, That'll help increase the infection rate across the colder countries as we move into the United States. 
and into Argentina. And now, as you can see, we're going worldwide. That's Japan, that's Asia, we've got Australasia, or Oceania, Oceania, Europe, North America, South America. And uh, now this one's interesting. The coughing symptom mutated. It has mutated and developed the coughing symptom without using DNA points. Now, when I play this particular level, I don't like to pass on any symptoms. I like to keep my nipples. <laughs> um, I like to keep them unnoticed by doctors, as hard as that sounds. And to do that, we can select the coughing trait that's been mutated automatically and we can devolve that trait and get a refund of two DNA points. Now as I do it, just watch this severity bar at the bottom. I know our disease is very unsevere anyway, but when I select that, you might just be able to tell that halved in severity. Just leaves it um, slightly harder to, to spot for the doctors. And I say my idea is to try and get everyone in the world infected before I go to town on the symptoms and try and kill everybody off before this progress bar in the bottom corner reaches 100%. And we'll see that start to rise as soon as the symptoms are noticed by the doctors worldwide. As the researchers across the world try to find a cure for our disease, we can then use the abilities tab, we can do drug resistance, we can do genetic reshuffling, things like that to try and slow down the progress whilst at the same time killing them off by whatever means we can, whichever means we can afford in terms of DNA points in the symptoms tab. At the minute we've got no symptoms, so obviously our disease is not fatal, it's not lethal. We just, like I say, we're just infecting the entire world, or at least that's the aim. So that's pretty much all of South America is covered in red. We like the red. And across the bottom of the screen, we're starting to reach almost 1 billion people worldwide with puffy nipples. Puffy nipples? Ginger nipples. <laughs> I've no idea what I was thinking about. Uh, we have ginger nipples, sorry. <laughs> yeah, we're starting to get... We've got 78 DNA points at the minute. I'm one of these. I don't like to spend points or money, uh, however it's measured in a game. I don't like to spend the money straight away. I know a lot of folk will see the points and they'll think, I've got to spend them as soon as I can. I'm one of these. I like to save up until something nice comes along and the same in this game I'm going to save it up until we've got the infection under control and then that gives me plenty of points to go in and apply a lot of symptoms so now we've got ginger nipples has mutated and developed the coughing symptom it's not very severe but I am going to devolve that one straight away I want to get this thing unnoticed for as long as possible Let's see how we're doing on the list of countries. So we've just got Greenland, the Caribbean, or the Caribbean if you're American, Poland, Ukraine, Sweden, Finland, and Central Europe. And to try and combat that, we'll try and increase the transmission trait somewhere. Uh, I quite like the look of this one, the bird one. Avian carriers increase infectivity, land transmission, and mutation. So I did that one. It's costing us 14 points. We've got quite a few, and that will increase as we infect more people. And that is indeed the Caribbean. Infected. Still waiting on these countries in Europe and Scandinavia. And we're reaching nearly half the world's population becoming infected. Experts have noticed very high levels of bird migration. They are worried that birds could rapidly spread disease between countries if they become infected. Okay, so basically what I'm saying is, is if we've got the bird traits 
active, which we've got at least, we've got the first level at least. Once a country becomes infected, it's going to increase quite rapidly. As you can see in Russia at the minute, this big country up here. So now we've got ginger nipples, mutated and developed nausea. We'll put a stop to that one. In America, what we've got 4,000 nearly. And there's Greenland. <laughs> Thank goodness for that one. Yeah, not many in Canada and United States. Hopefully that will increase shortly. In fact, what I'll do, we'll go in and get the second level of bird. It's going to cost 21. But after what I've just read, here we go again. With the um, extreme bird migration event. Hopefully that's going to play in our favour. There can't be many countries left now. Let's see how we're doing. That's every country is infected now. So that's good. So now I just want to wait for these countries that are still green to fill up with red. Australia is starting to go up quite quickly. Don't forget, once it gets started, it will go up a lot quicker than it did at the beginning. I'll just leave Australia open for now, just to show you how quick it does start to go up. While I wait on North America still. And Scandinavia has been quite slow. Greenland's starting to fill up now. That must that must be the birds taking effect. It's the rash symptom mutated. Again, we'll devolve that one. Let's go back on Australia, let you see the bar go up. I said once it's past the sort of fifty percent mark, it's going up rapidly. Okay, so we're still struggling over here and in Scandinavia. So we'll see what we can do to speed that up. I could go with water increases in humid environments and ship transmission. I could go air, arid environments and plane transmission. Rodents in urban regions. Or we've got livestock in rural regions. Let's go and take a look at a few countries. Sweden's struggling. And that is a rich urban country. Cold, humid climate. Where else was there? Canada's struggling. Cold climate, rich country. And the USA. Rich urban countries. So there's something in... in in common with these they're all pretty urban countries so with that in mind we'll go back to the DNA points and we'll select one such as rodent increases in infectivity especially in urban regions and mutation it's gonna cost 14 let's try it we'll go with rodent one and with a bit of luck we'll start seeing the numbers go up in Canada and North America okay so now I've just seen France get totally infected the central Europe has been fully infected and as you can see the United States is now infected Canada is well on its way over 20 million now that's only a matter of seconds before that's infected and, and I think that is the last country. As a worldwide statistic, we're very close to world infection. 6,800,000,000. We're just moments away from fully infecting the entire world with ginger nipples. We've got 123 DNA points to spend. 
And we can play this in one of two ways now. As it says there, there are no healthy people left in the world. Now we can play it one of two ways. I can either go into the DNA symptoms board and just spend a load of points on symptoms and kill everyone off quickly. Or I can go into the abilities and start adding the resistance to drugs because it's only a matter of time once I start killing people off that this thing gets noticed by doctors and the world starts its cure research program and that's when it's a race against time for us to kill off all the infected people i.e. everyone on earth. Don't forget as well that as we kill off people um, the random orange bubbles will appear and we will still get some DNA points while we're killing people off. So with that in mind, I'm going to go to the symptoms and I'm going to try and get um, a group of traits together, evolve our bacteria so that the lethal uh, lethality bar down here comes into play and we can try and get it as high as we can, which will mean people are going to die a lot quicker before that research is complete and then by by which point if we need to we should have some DNA points to spend on drug resistance if we need to and genetic reshuffling we'll see how it goes so we'll start by we need to find something that's not too severe so that it gives it a little time to get noticed by doctors insomnia I wouldn't have thought insomnia was severe, but it's quite a high rating when you compare it to things such as coughing and the rash. Cysts are quite bad. Let's go with rash. We'll start with the rash. That then unlocks sweating. More dangerous in cold countries. So we'll do that one. We then unlock either fever or the skin lesions and if you notice the fever does start the lethality bar going um, and it's less severe so we'll start with the fever we can then go into the immune suppression that increases the lethality further still we'll evolve, evolve that one that unlocks total organ failure and look at the lethality bar on this one without it it's down there and as soon as I select total, total organ failure yeah the severity goes up but also the lethality bar goes way higher and for 32 DNA points I think that's a goer so then in turn that unlocks either the coma which is a highly severe trait or the pulmonary fibrosis let's try that one we can then go with the pulmonary edema we'll do that one and then we can go with diarrhea or vomiting Poor country is very vulnerable. We like the idea with that one. And then we can't afford dysentery yet, but I think that's what I'm going to get next. That's going to cost 27. We've got 21, but I think to get started, that's what we're going to play with. What we've got on the screen, that is our newly developed ginger nipples disease. We'll see how it goes. So as soon as I press OK, watch the dead figure, the death figure, as this thing starts killing people off. Okay, let's see how it goes. Okay, so ginger nipples as infected most of the world. In order to kill people, you must evolve lethal advanced symptoms using DNA points, which we've just done. And here we go. In a normal checkup, a doctor in Central Africa found a new disease which has been named ginger nipples. It appears to be mostly harmless, but must be investigated further. Other countries are also reporting the di this disease. First death from ginger nipples has been confirmed in Bolivia. 
bad luck or the beginning of something terrible. I think it's going to be pretty damn terrible. And we've been on the RMS list now. Already dangerous governments are warned that it could become unstoppable. With a bit of luck it will. And here we go with the cure effort. Canada has started to send research teams to infected countries hoping to speed up development of a cure for ginger nipples. Pop blue bubbles to destroy their research. That's those just here. And already the cure progress is up to 5%. They're trying to, uh, Mexico has become the first country to try and limit the spread of ginger nipples by limiting access into and out of the country. Time will tell if this will work. And this is really a race against time. Our aim is to kill off we need 6.8 billion deaths in this figure just here before this progress chart gets 100%. So these statements now we're killing off more than the Black Death. Um, now we're killing off more than the Spanish flu. And also we're starting to get those disease points again as we kill off more people. Okay, we just need to keep clicking these. Normal life in Saudi Arabia is beginning to break down due to ginger nipples. <laughs> cure research is starting to slow. I like that idea. The cure for ginger nipples is 25% complete. So what I'm going to do, leave it till it gets to about 50. And then see where we are on the death toll. See if we need to go into um, some ability traits. So now globally... People are researching this thing. Just keep clicking the bubbles. Blue bubbles, orange bubbles, whatever. Okay, so at the 50% complete stage. And we have killed off nearly 4 billion. So I think I'm going to leave it there for now. Wait till it gets to 75. And then we've got plenty of points should we need to use them. Saudi Arabia... It's a first to fall in anarchy over ginger nipples. No cure research can take place in Saudi Arabia. And what we can do, we just click on this tab. And this bar here shows which are the key research contributors. So once sort of Spain, New Zealand and UK start going down, the research level will drop. Uh, the level won't drop, but the, the speed, the progress speed will slow down quite a bit with a bit of luck. So we're reaching 6 billion, there's 62% progress. And I don't think we're going to have to spend any more disease points. I think everyone's going to die before that progress reaches 100%. What do you reckon? <laughs> Down to the last 150 million. And yeah, I think we're going to do it guys. So yeah, this video I've um, tried to use it as a bit of a tutorial at the same time. Um, what's this one? Ginger Nipples has had its genome fully sequenced by scientists. RMS researchers say that this breakthrough, breakthrough will help cure efforts. But I don't think they're in time. I think everyone's going to die off before this cure is spread across the world. Yeah, I've used it as a bit of a tutorial to show you through the controls. I'm quite new to the game myself. Um, I have tried this first type, this first level, a few times. But as we go on to the next levels, I'm going to be quite new to it myself. I've literally played once or twice on the next virus, so it will be quite new to me and we'll play it along as a, a, a more of a let's play rather than a tutorial we'll go through it I won't have to describe what I'm doing as much and we'll see how we where we go from there uh, so getting back to this one ginger nipples has mutated the cyst symptom obviously now I'm not going to devolve these all the mutated symptoms are now helping kill off the world's population what's left of it 
And what we've got now? Ginger Nipples has destroyed the world despite the world's best efforts. The last few humans know they are watching the end of, his, the, the end of history. <laughs> so folks, down to the last couple hundred thousand. The progress has pretty much stalled at 70%, 71%. All the governments are collapsing. The news bulletins there, all these in orange. That's the different governments worldwide collapsing. And there we go. Ginger Nipples has successfully eliminated all life on Earth. It took 1,934 days. There's a complex genetic complexity. The cure progress reached 70%, although I'm sure it was 71. We played the main game, Bacteria Normal, difficulty. Score 4,320. Two out of five stars, or two out of five logos. Uh, not brilliant, but at the end of the day, we've claimed a victory. Now, I'll just speed this up a little for you. This shows our progress, just a brief summary. We started in South Africa just here. It took nearly 200 days, did it? And we started spreading our disease up towards the UK, Madagascar, up towards Egypt, the Middle East, North America, South America. And at this point it was spreading, if you remember, it was spreading all over the world, left, right and centre. So yeah, I'll leave this for you to watch. Um, thanks for watching the video guys. If you have liked the video, hit the thumbs up button. button. If you want to uh, get notified of the next episode, I will make another video on this one for you. See how we get on with the next plague type. By all means, hit the subscribe button. You will get notified as soon as it is released. And I would have thought it would be pretty soon to be honest with you I'm getting a little bit of time to get these videos up and we'll see where we go from there with this game if we find that we're getting through quite nicely and we're progressing well and I'm enjoying the game I will make more videos we'll see where it goes any comments by all means leave them below for me to read I will read them all and I'll try and get some interaction going with you guys let us know how you're getting on with this game if you're playing it yourself. If you're undecided whether to play it or uh, to buy it or not. I hope this has given you um, a bit more of an inkling whether it's for you or not. It is available on Steam. I'll leave the link in the description below. And on that note, I'll leave this to run out to the 1934th day for you. And I'll see you in the next video. Thanks a lot guys, we'll see you soon, bye bye.